Tyson Geick of the NHL Flash here with Toronto Maple Leafs insider Paul Hendrick. W which mic are we using here, Paul? Well, we got to go with this one. This is just a prop. Is it? But, okay. You know, I'm a bit of a fake personality guy. No, I'm all hard here. This is all true. But this mic's not working. This is the one that's good. <laughs> prop, prop microphones. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Props uh, to the city of Collingwood here and everybody else. This has been a fabulous week. And, you know, Mother Nature's kicked in with some great weather. 57 kids. Tyson, a year ago this camp, they had 29 kids. And there's a little difference logistically of making something like that work, let alone 57 kids in, in another city. So the city's been good. Mother Nature's kicked in. These facilities are fantastic fantastic and uh, it's just been a good good vibe I, I just wrote an article on, on, on Zach Hyman about how this, the Leafs are re rebuilding and rebranding and the rebranding starts right here in terms of access to the public Leafs nation accountability to themselves to the media and, and it's been a great start here so far yeah, what does that say about the management group coming in and really changing things up? And it, it comes from the ground up. We see not only players on the ice changing, but the personnel changes and, and even, you know, the facility changes. So what does that say about the management group? Well, it's a new look, and I know they, they've heard about changing the culture and all these things, but this is truly, truly legitimate. And when you're... Uh You've got a guy like Brendan Shanahan because it starts at the top and you think of where he was with with Detroit and and Mark Hunter and the championship teams and the atmosphere that of course that he brings with him from the London Knights and Kyle Dubas and um, it, it's a total overhaul and and you look at the kids and they've been told and, and we knew about it right from day one of training camp when when the message was asked of of um, William Nylander what what's the message you've been given here on day one work hard and be good people. I mean, it's a simple mantra in which to live by, but that's what these guys, they want these guys to do. And then of course, the other part of it takes place on the ice, but there's balance on the ice, off the ice, piece of pier and, and, and of course, competitive piece out there. So that, that, that's what I think they're buying into. And it's a project. I mean, this is just really year one and it's gonna be a good three years before this franchise gets up and running. But you look at all the talent, four first round picks already here. A couple of years ago, we had Morgan Riley as a first round pick. There wasn't much beyond that. So the cupboards are being stocked, but it's a big, big improvement, especially in the emotional, psychological aspect of the game as to where they want their players moving forward. Paul, you hear about the William Nylanders, the Mitch Marners, but which other players are there out there that we may not be speaking about right now that you have seen in this development camp that, that Toronto Maple Leaf fans should be on the watch for? That's a great question, and, and, and you know what? I can go on and on, but Zach Hyman is a player who the, uh, the Leafs just picked up from Florida. University of Michigan Athlete of the Year, not Hockey Player of the Year, Athlete of the Year. Tom Brady once won that award, and they don't give it very often to hockey players at that school. Not only is an outstanding hockey player, uh, led the Big Ten in scoring, he's an author. He's written two children's books, one published already, The Bambino and Me, the next one, Hockey Hero, coming out in October. He's under contract with Random House to produce two more. That's the balance on the other side of it in terms of what I was talking about, brains, brawn. Uh, you look at a defenseman like Renat Valiev, uh, was on Russia's top pairing at the World Junior Championships, 19 years of age. They got him at, as a 19-year-old. And a kid we just talked to, Andrew Nielsen, who plays for the Lethbridge Hurricanes, he was playing midget double-A hockey two years ago. And all of a sudden, here he is. He's lost 35 pounds. He's a big, tough, bruising defenseman, but tall and skinny now. And, and, and uh, they, they got him 65th overall. And the other 19-year-old defenseman, Stephen DeRoche of the Oshawa Generals, who scored that big overtime goal against Quebec in Game 2 of the Memorial Cup, he's another 19-year-old missed out on the 18 years of age as far as draft is concerned, but they've got him. They're all long-term projects, but they're all tall, big, strong bodies. Um, building toward the future and the New England Patriot style of, of terms of, of, of producing a successful team, a successful team, get as many prospects as you can in one place and eventually some of them are going to stick. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've seen 57 kids here right now. But you mentioned names, Zach Hyman, Renat Valiev. I mean, I can go on and on. Uh, those are just two. And Andrew Nielsen, maybe three. So a lot of the players who are coming into the Toronto Maple Leaf system now feature a lot of skill and a lot of speed. Maybe some smaller players here. Yeah. Is this something that Toronto Maple Leaf fans should be concerned about moving forward? Man, you had to see Eric Carlson at the draft in 2008 when I think they took him 16th or 17th overall. I thought it was the Ottawa Citizen, Citizen honoring their Paperboy of the Year award. I mean, there is no excess meat on his cast, but there's never excess meat on a racehorse, right? And, and, and then I think of Johnny Godro, uh, you know, Johnny Hockey in Calgary. He's smaller than all these guys. He's certainly smaller than all these guys. Um, there's room, and Patrick Kane's the other prime example. 
small guys. It's a skill league right now. Now, do you need size? Yes, you do. But in terms of top six potential, this organization really hasn't had any the last few years. Now, all of a sudden, we've got at least six to seven kids that might fit that bill in a couple of years ago from now. Smaller, yes, but talented, talented, talented. So uh, there's time to add the size as well. But in terms of the skill set, yeah, they're a little bit smaller but it shouldn't be a problem. And these kids are only 18 years of age. They're going to grow. A guy was tweeting to me, hey, Tyler Johnson's 190 pounds. Tyler Johnson's also 24 years of age. These guys are six years younger than that. We gotta let them grow. Now, Paul, there have been a lot of deals being signed that are way more short term than you know we've been experiencing yeah. in the past as people covering the Toronto Maple Leafs. Flexibility, right? Exactly. And this team wants to get up and rolling in three years. You don't want to be tied down to long-term contracts. I mean, some players, you're going to have to give them that. But I think for the better part, you want flexibility. And I think five years will be the maximum. And that will only go to special players, obviously. But I think well, three years, and in many cases, one year, they're bringing in guys for a year, dangling the carrot, go and have a great season. If we, the team thinks that they should sign them on a longer-term basis, you've got that flexibility. Or they do, as they did with Mike Sandorelli and Daniel Winnick last year, trade them for draft picks and acquire more potential talent. So what can Toronto Maple Leafs fans expect going into the 2015-2016 season here? A team that will compete. Say they're going to make the playoffs? No. I, 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 I don't think so, but who knows. They've got a pretty good head coach, and if the goaltending is good and everything is fine, it's hard to say. But realistically, this is a team that's going to compete day in, day out. Are they going to win every game? No, they're not. Uh, but I think all Leafs Nation wants right now is an honest effort. In a few years from now, as this group matures, they're going to want a very competitive team. And boy, oh boy, they're going to be hungry for a winner. But they're going to get it. It's going to take a few years. Fantastic analysis there from Paul Hendrick, Toronto Maple Leafs insider. Toronto Maple Leafs fans do have a lot to be excited about. Moving forward, this season is going to be a big one for the club and a lot different looking than anything we've seen in the past.